Well, hey, good morning. Just wanted to say welcome to Refuge and so glad that you are connecting with us wherever you may be, whether it's in the beauty of your home, in your living room, perhaps you're even logging in when you're in your kitchen trying to make breakfast this morning, or maybe you're still in bed. Any of that works. We are just excited that you have chosen to join us this morning for Church at Home which is a new reality for Refuge, as well as churches all around the world. I'm actually here with my family. I'm going to turn the uh, camera so you can see them. We're here in our living room, just making life happen. Yeah. I want to shout out to the rest of our team that's making Church at Home possible this morning. And so if I can ask our production manager to shoot live to our other team members, that would be great. So we want to have church with you this morning. And like church does every time that we gather on Sundays, when we meet together, we want to do that here online and actually do some worship this morning. And so I want to pitch it over to my buddy David, who's in his home. He's got his guitar and a microphone ready to go. And we're going to sing a couple of songs this morning. You'll see some words on the screen, hopefully. But they're songs that are familiar to our refuge community, and they're also really meaningful words and passages and songs for the time that we find ourselves in. So, David, take it away. faithful in perfect time your goodness it overwhelms and I am held and through the fire you're my shield your protection it never fails no power can separate i am safe you are bigger than all my fears god of love god my love you are bigger than all my dreams god my hope god my peace Whatever will come my way through each day, I will say, God, I trust you. I trust you. And you're the treasure that I desire. I surrender my whole life for your glory. My great reward, I am yours. Use me, Lord. You are bigger than all my fears. God of love, God, my love, you are bigger than all my dreams. God, my hope, God, my peace. Whatever will come my way through each day, I will say, God, I trust you. I trust you. Cause you are the God who always sees us Even in barren, desperate seasons No matter what the circumstance You are the rock on which I stand You are the God who always sees us Even in barren, desperate seasons No matter what the circumstance You are the rock on which I stand You are bigger than all my fears God of love, God my love You are 
bigger than all my dreams Got my hope, got my peace Whatever will come my way Through each day I will say God, I trust you I trust you I want to invite you wherever you're at, wherever you're watching, uh, to take a moment to pause, to not focus so much on the fact that we are live streaming church and that that's something new and kind of strange. I want to invite you to just be still. To acknowledge the truth of this song that God is still good, that He's still in control, and that this situation, like others, times of difficulty, times of confusion, is another opportunity for us to draw near to God, to see Him in a different way, a new way, to rely on Him. Something that maybe we don't have to do as often in times of uh, ease. God, we acknowledge this morning that you are bigger than all that's going on right now. We thank you that we can still have church. We thank you for technology and a team that allows us to worship you. Even when we can't gather in a building together, this community wants to be a safe space to proclaim your goodness. Because our confidence comes not from ourselves or our circumstances, but from you, from knowing a God that never changes, that is consistent. Walking around these walls I thought by now they'd fall But you have never failed me yet Waiting for change to come Knowing the battle's won For you have never failed me yet Your promise still stands Great is your faithfulness Your faithfulness I'm still in your hands This is my confidence You never failed me yet And I know the night won't last Your word will come to pass my heart will sing your praise again Jesus, you're still in life Keep me within your love My heart will sing your praise again Your promise still stands Great is your faithfulness Your faithfulness I'm 
I'm still in your hands This is my confidence You never failed me yet Your promise still stands Great is your faithfulness Your faithfulness I'm still in your hands This is my confidence You never failed me yet I've seen you move, you move the mountains And I believe, I'll see you do it again You made a way, when there was no way And I believe, I'll see you do it again You made a way, you move the mountains And I believe I'll see you do it again You made a way When there was no way And I believe I'll see you do it again I've seen you move You move the mountains And I believe I'll see you do it again You made a way When there was no way and I believe I'll see you do it again Your promise still stands Great is your faithfulness, your faithfulness I'm still in your hands, this is my confidence You never failed me yet Promise still stands. Great is your faithfulness, your faithfulness. I'm still in your hands. This is my confidence. You never failed me yet. Your promise still stands Great is your faithfulness Your faithfulness I'm still in your hands This is my confidence You never failed me yet God, we thank you for this morning We thank you that we can still gather in your name to celebrate your goodness. We pray that this morning will be changed by you, Father, even in these circumstances, even in times of confusion, when we don't really know what's coming next. God, we pray that we can turn to you in faith and say that you are good and that we can be calm and feel at peace because you are in control. We thank you for all we have. We thank you for the ways in which we can help each other. And we pray that you open our eyes this week uh, to the opportunities in front of us to continue to be your kingdom. Amen. Thank you so much, David. I don't know about you, but sometimes worship is the stuff that really kind of propels my heart into some right reality. And music does that. I'm sure music does that for you. You have a podcast that you listen to for words, but sometimes there's nothing like good music. Uh, to really bring home some good truths, especially about God. So I appreciate the songs that we sang this morning, the idea that God is bigger than our fears. I don't know about you, 
but there have been moments where I've been filled with great fear and anxiety this past week as the circumstances of our world continue to get worse. And then I also want to know that God is in the midst of doing it again. He's in the past. He's got power and he's interested in being mighty yet again. And he hasn't forgotten us. So I encourage you even add those two songs to a playlist, perhaps this week, put them on repeat and allow God to speak to you through them. Hey, it's been a, it's been a week, hasn't it? We thought last week was a week and then this week, and then we don't really know what the future weeks are going to look like. But we do know that we have the opportunity to gather together in this kind of context. And uh, I'm just really grateful that you have signed in, whether you're watching online in some kind of format or you'll be watching this a little bit later. Every week when we gather in a physical location at our church gatherings, we run through some announcements, things that you we want you to know about life here at Refuge in the city of Orange, in our county of Orange and around the world. And so I've got my friend, Hannah, my daughter, who wants to help us this morning by just giving us some uh, homemade announcements. So first things first, we want to tell you about the weekly. So Hannah, show them how they can find the weekly. If you go to refugeoc.com slash weekly, you'll be able to find more information about what's happening in the life of our church. And so grab your smart device, whether it's a phone, a tablet, or even your computer. And anytime throughout the week, you can head there and grab the latest news of what's happening here at Refuge. And I encourage you, there's even new information today at the weekly. So grab your grab your device and find some information at that site. Next, what do we got? Okay, we have created a new page on our website called Church at Home. And so refugeoc.com forward slash church at home. And there might even be a link for those of you who are watching via Facebook. There should be a link popping up in the comment thread. And you'll be able to head to that site to find resources for you and your family. You can click on the live stream for us here to join this video recording. But if you have kids in your house, you're like, what do I do with my kids? There's no chance that they want to listen to you talk, Brenton. And so we know we got it. We got we understand. And on that link at Church at Home, you'll be able to find some resources and some videos to download for kids of all ages. And so if you've got a preschool in your house, an elementary, a preteen, whatever, go to that website, download some videos that they can watch even today. And then you also have an opportunity to download some parental guides to kind of help further the God conversations that you're having in your house around the dinner table, the breakfast table or even the lunch table, because we're all at home eating food here. And so head to that website. All right, next up, what do we got, Hannah? Okay, so facebook.com forward slash refuge OC. This has been public for years now. You can obviously head there, connect with us in a community. We'll put announcements up, but I do want to put to put up for you and you'll find these these uh, this link in our comments this morning um, in the Facebook feed is we've created an in-house Facebook group. It's a private closed group and not to say we just want to be closed off to the rest of the world, but there, sometimes there's information that we want to share and doesn't get broadcast publicly. And so we've got a Facebook group that's devoted to refuge. This website that you see Hannah holding this morning is actually for our public page. But if you go there, there will be a link and you'll just have to ask to be added to that group. And so we hope you can do that. Next, what do we got? Ah, Royal Family Kids Camp, RFKC. We have been talking about it for years. And last year was a great year for us as a church where last summer we took 21 kids that are in the foster care system in Orange County and helped them have a week at camp. They got to go up to the mountains. They got to have a, a great time. They had some fun. They got to learn to swim. Some of them for the first time. They got to sing great songs, play wonderful games, have all kinds of fun doing crafts and learning about Jesus. And we wanna give these kids another mountaintop experience this coming summer. And so we want you to join our team, our Royal Family Kids Camp team. If you go to this website, you'll find more information. If you're a returning counselor or staff member, you'll find an application for this year. But if you're interested in joining our team as a new member, you can find a new member application, a new team member application on that website as well. And we hope that you'll join us and make a difference in a kid's life this coming August. And so that's Royal Family Kids Camp. And finally, what else is next? What do we got? Okay, refugeoc.com forward slash give. This is an opportunity for you to give to Refuge. And I know what you're thinking. Oh, churches are already asking for my money. But we are grateful for the ways that you are generous with your resources to bless us that we get a chance to in turn bless other people. And so what you give to Refuge goes out from us into our community, into our county and around the world. And we just want to say thank you. Yesterday was an example of that. We got a chance and you'll find even pictures on our Facebook page. We got a chance to take some groceries to some families in need and an apartment complex in Fullerton because we recognize that in these times, it's hard enough to get our 
own groceries, but what about those who have been hardest hit by the realities of the coronavirus? And so if you will help us, we want to continue to further our efforts in our county and in our town. And so help us know how we can do that by your generosity and your blessings. So we say thank you. And you can head to this website and be a part of the opportunity to give. So thanks so much for listening to some announcements. Hannah, thank you. you want to wave to the crowd? <laughs> Bye. All right. So perhaps you came for the music. You may have come for the announcements with my daughter, Hannah. She makes them look better than I do. Um, but we also want to open up some scripture this morning. So if you've got a Bible nearby, I want you to turn to John chapter nine. I'm going to give you a chance to grab that. Um, perhaps you have a real Bible in your house or wherever you're at, or perhaps you have another device that you can look on your phone with you. But the link is up, John chapter nine. We're going to look at the first 12 verses. As a community, we have been rocking through what's called the lectionary and the liturgical calendar. And for some of you, that's familiar language. For some of you, that's completely foreign. And you're like, what are you talking about? I, only, I thought only those people did that or those types of churches did that. And I would just want to say for us, the liturgical calendar has been such a guiding force as we have paced ourselves throughout the year. We have high celebration seasons like Advent when we get ready for Christmas. And then we also have celebration seasons when we get ready for Easter, which is the time that we find ourselves in now. We're in the season of Lent. This is Lent week four. And so for us, when we gather and we read through these passages, we're often considering what is it that God wants to say to us and to our community through them. And so John chapter nine happens to be the gospel reading of the day. If you remember, there are four gospel writers that presented in the New Testament. You have Matthew, you have Mark, Luke, and John. And John's take on the angle and life of Jesus sometimes looks different than the others. And for this story that we're going to drop in, he actually takes the entire chapter to tell the story. But we, because internet time is shorter than real time, we are just going to look at those first 12 verses. And so I hope you have a Bible with you. You can obviously look at it later. And I encourage you to read this story even later with your family or by yourself, wherever you find yourself, because it's it's a fascinating story about what's happening. And so Jesus is well into his ministry that's public. He has gathered his disciples around him and he is off living his life, but also proclaiming the kingdom and new realities that are in effect because he's on the ground making them happen. And instead of using the phrase miracles, Jesus in John's words will, will perform what's called signs. And so one of the signs that we know he is the son of God is this miraculous moment that happens in John chapter nine. And so if you've turned there, if you have it, you might even be able to open up another web browser and take a look with me. But John chapter nine, beginning in verse one, here is how the story goes. As he went along, he saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, which just means teacher, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Neither this man nor his parents sinned, said Jesus, but this happened so that the works of God might be displayed in him. As long as it is day, we must do the works of him who sent me. Night is coming when no one can work. While I am in the world, I am the light of the world. After saying this, he spit on the ground. Weird, right? He spit on the ground, made some mud with the saliva and put it on the man's eyes. Go, he told him. Wash in the pool of Siloam, and this word means sent. So the man went and washed and came home seeing. Did you hear that? He was blind, and now he sees. His neighbors and those who had, for, had formerly seen him begging asked, Isn't this the same man who used to sit and beg? Some claimed that he was. Others said, No, he only looks like him. But he himself insisted, I am the man. How then were your eyes opened, they asked. And he replied, the man they called Jesus made some mud and put it on my eyes. He told me to go to Siloam and wash. So I went and washed and then I could see. Well, where is this man? They asked him. I don't know. And that's where I'll stop our reading for this day. But I really encourage you read the rest of it because the drama is thick. There are people that don't believe the Pharisees are out to get Jesus. They don't believe that someone can heal. And a little bit later down the, down the road, we find out that Jesus did this on the Sabbath, which you should never have done. You should never heal someone on the Sabbath, according to the rules of the Pharisees, who thought that if we just act right, God will show up. But Jesus is showing them a new way that he even has the power to heal people on the Sabbath. But we've had these questions. We 
can understand what's happening in the setting. We can drop in and hear the historical context, what's going on. But when we drop our own lives into this situation, every single one of us has been there. When the disciples see this blind man and they ask that question, well, rabbi or teacher, who sinned? Was it him or his parents? Because that was the thinking of the day. And to be real honest, it's still the thinking of our day. When we come across bad times or bad things or perhaps roadblocks in our way, and we have friends in our lives and loved ones and family members who have had calamity come their way, we often wonder, well, is it because of something that we did? Is it because of something that in my life I have done against God that this is the punishment that I receive? And I want to say, just like Jesus said, you're asking the wrong question, and it's a bad question. Uh, how many of you have been in those classroom settings where teachers will be like, there's no bad question? And I think Jesus in this moment is kind of saying to us, it's a bad question or a dumb question because it's not the right question. The right question looks different. Because for this man who had been born blind, now think about that, the reality of growing up ever since the day you were born with not having the ability to see, the reality of what that means, the impact that has on you and your family, you're a constant, especially in that society, a nuisance to your family, something to be discarded or thrown away, and you have no hope of having any kind of trade or opportunity to work for your welfare. And so this person, ends up doing what most people do, just living on the street, begging. But then Jesus comes along. And isn't it interesting that this guy doesn't ask to be healed? It's just because the disciples take notice of him. And when they ask their question, oh, is it who was saying him or his parents? And Jesus does the miraculous thing where he spits in the ground, rubs his saliva in it, makes some mud, and then puts it on the guy's eyes and says, go wash. And when he washes, he is healed. When that happens, the world is amazed because God and Jesus, God through Jesus, has changed this person's reality. And I think that's that's really what I want to leave with you today in this midst of the world we find ourselves in, where we are asking the questions, well, who caused coronavirus? And we're quick to blame. We'll blame it on a people group or our country, and, and we even leave, l listen to the political rhetoric of our own country, and we wonder, is it a Democratic problem or a Republican problem? And I'm here to say that neither the Republicans nor the Democrats caused coronavirus. And our response to this crisis is what we will be judged upon, just like our response to this beggar in John chapter 9 is really what's happening for Jesus and his disciples. And the moment that he wants to teach them don't ask the question, who sinned? Like, who's to blame for this moment? Instead, ask the question, well, what can God do in this moment? And so that's the question that I want to leave with you as you head into the rest of this coming week with an uncertainty and you're filled with wonderment of what is God in the midst of doing right now? Why can't he just heal everybody? And we believe in a God who can. But my guess is that instead of asking that question or asking who caused this, my guess is that God is asking us the question, well, how can you make my kingdom known in this time? What is it about me, my reality, and my kingdom that you can make known to the world around you? Which looks like caring for the people that are close to us. It means taking groceries to some people in Fullerton that need it. It looks like giving some toilet paper to your neighbor who desperately needs it. It means caring for the person who is a shut-in and can't get out for even the most necessary of items. Don't ask the question, is it whose fault this is? Instead, ask the question, well, what is God up to? What is he possibly going to do in this moment? And how can he use me? That's my hope as we look at this passage, because these are strong words that Jesus gives to his followers and his disciples, and they're still strong words for every single one of us. Instead of looking for blame, let's look for an opportunity for God's kingdom to shine forth. Instead of putting someone in a category as if it's their problem, let's look for God's healing. And let's be the ones who can probably bring it. Because from that day forward, the blind man could see. And a little further down in, in John chapter 9, as the Pharisees are on their witch hunt, literally on their witch hunt to try to find who can we pin with the bad news that you healed on the Sabbath. They come across this guy one more time and he's like, you're not even listening to me. All I know is this. I was born blind, but now I see. So we know there are realities before us. And some of you 
coronavirus isn't the thing that is heavy upon your heart or your soul right now. But there's other things that are weighing you down. And you're wondering how you're going to get through it. And you're filled with the anxiety and the fear. And instead of saying, well, how did this happen? Who can I blame? Change the question and ask, what does God want to do? That's good news. And that's the word that I want to leave with you today. So let me pray for you. God, even in this uh, crazy world that we find ourselves in, the anxiety of the unknown and the fear of the reality we're in, we need your presence. We need your presence to be with us. We need your presence to guide us through every single day that comes forward. We used to know what reality would look like with a little bit more confidence, but things are a little bit more unsettling right now. But just like the years of old, when we would proclaim that you are the one who holds our future in your hands, we want to trust that you are holding every single day that comes. I pray for those who have been severely stricken by the news and the realities of coronavirus. I pray for healing. I pray for healing around our country. I pray for healing in other countries like Italy and China and South Korea and beyond. I pray that through the miraculous work of your son, Jesus Christ, and the power of your Holy Spirit, there would be healing that comes. And for those who are listening and watching, who are succumbed by fear themselves, would you remind them that you are with us, that you walk with us every single day, that you haven't forsaken us, you're not in the business of leaving your people hanging, and you won't start doing that now, but you're going to continue to be with us. May that be good news for this week. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Hey, before we leave, we want to sing one more song together, and together takes on a whole new context. And so I'm going to pitch it back over to my buddy David for one final song. And after he sings this song, I want to send you out with a blessing into your week. So David, take it from here. If you're at home right now, which I assume a lot of you are, uh, I want to try something. I'm going to uh, invite you to sit, but on the floor, cross-legged, like we did as kids in elementary school. I've been thinking about how this is an opportunity to really depend on God, to acknowledge that we don't have control. And this is a posture that makes me feel uh, childlike. I don't know if it does that for you too, but um, so I'm going to invite you to uh, take a seat and kind of just rest, close your eyes. thought this was an appropriate song to sing um, because it reduces our focus just to our breath, something that we have with us that's God-given. Uh, at a time like this when we're so um, concerned with what we have, if we're well-stocked, um, focused on things and stuff and money, you know, the stress of that. So I thought we could end the service with focusing on something that we're ha we have and that we're blessed to have that comes from God and that it's reason enough to worship Him. So if you're sitting on the ground with your eyes closed, let's take a um, moment to just breathe, to rest. You give light you are love, you bring light to the darkness, you give hope, you restore every heart that is broken. Go 
Great are you, Lord. Great are you, Lord. Great are you, Lord. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise. We pour out our praise. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise to you only. Great are you, Lord. You give life. You are life. You bring light to the darkness. You give hope. You restore every heart that it is broken. Great are you, Lord. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise. We pour out our praise. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise to you only. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise. We pour out our praise. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise to you only. And all the earth will shout your praise Our hearts will cry, these bones will sing Great are you, Lord And all the earth will shout your praise Our hearts will cry these bones will sing Great are you, Lord And all the earth will shout your praise Our hearts will cry These bones will sing Great are you, Lord It's your breath it's your breath in our lungs So we pour out our praise We pour out our praise It's your breath in our lungs So we pour out our praise to you only It's your breath in our lungs so we pour out our praise, we pour out our praise, it's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise to you only. Great are you, Lord. Great are you, Lord. Great are you, Lord. Great are you, Lord. Thank you, David. 
Thanks for the choice of songs for this day. May you have eyes to see the greatness of the Lord this week. And I'm even reminded as we see the comments and the interactions happening online that we have members of our pastoral team that are ready to even respond to the prayer requests that you might have for this coming week. You can drop them in the Facebook comments or you can even send us direct messages or emails. We want to be standing with you and praying with you for whatever it is that you're facing. There are so many realities of life that are changing and they look different than they did even a week ago. And so we want to continue to pray with you and be there for you and support you however is necessary. But this week, as we end our time together, may you have eyes to see what God is up to in your life. And may he give you the right questions, not the questions that other people are asking of like how and why did this happen? But instead, what is God up to in the midst of this and how can he, how can he use each one of us? I pray God's peace and his blessing over you this week. And we look forward to gathering again in an online context soon. So check out all of our information, whether online or in social media, to find out when that is going to happen. Peace be upon your day and your week.